So yeah, then back to the Savion Jones interview. I think, um, I think with Savion Jones, I think, I think it's cool, you know, how he's went, he's went through some adversity in life. He almost died, uh, as a kid, he was telling the story. Um, and yeah, it sounds like he was a, you know, highly regarded player. Um, yeah, they got, they have some, a few guys, Greg Penn, the linebacker, I've talked about it. LSU does, has done such an excellent job of recruiting and like, you know, I've noticed this a lot, a lot about a lot of SEC schools. They bring in so much four stars, five, you know, not as much five stars, but you know, obviously five stars too, but they bring in so much four stars, Georgia, LSU, like some guys just, you know, it doesn't work out for whatever reason. Maybe they're just really not that, you know, maybe not as good as, as they thought they just, you know, were physically mature, you know, beyond their years in high school and it doesn't really uh, translate to college as well but you know they you know guys like Savion Jones and Quincy Wiggins and uh, Jacoby and, and Gilroy they you know LSU just kind of banks on that these guys recover and uh, they can or these guys uh, really develop so you know if a guy is a four-star recruit obviously there is some sort there are some traits that that guy has that you know that he possesses that they he could play at the division one level so you know a lot of times if they if it doesn't work out it probably is a it likely is a work ethic thing now it kind of it varies you know there there is some other factors uh at play you know injuries uh illness um obviously some other things but yeah i mean with how with how well how accurate recruiting is getting if a guy uh becomes a bust at the college level it's a lot of times you know probably Sometimes it's external factors like injury, illness, but a lot of times it's on that guy uh, that he just, you know, maybe it's, yeah, it's, he's just not working hard enough. He's not keeping his body right. Uh, maybe he's in the wrong, could be in the wrong position. That's another thing. If you remember J.J. Watt uh, went to Central Michigan as a tight end, uh, eventually transferred to Wisconsin and became, and then, you know, moved to defensive line. But, yeah, they, uh, they asked Savion Jones uh, about Deshaun Womack. If you're not familiar with Deshaun Womack as an LSU fan, he is a, a five-star defensive end, edge rusher guy with a lot of hype coming out of the Baltimore, Maryland area. Asked him about Womack and asked, is he the real deal? Now, he didn't, it was interesting. He did not, he said, I would say he is the real deal. Didn't say it super confidently, which is interesting. Now, I watch Womack and I say this. Womack kind of scares me a tad. I think he could be a solid player for LSU, but he scares me in the sense that he wins by... He wins a lot of times with just, you know, just pure speed. And the last time I saw a guy like this, um, it was from Baltimore, Maryland, was Iabi Oki. Now, you could say Iabi Oki's had a, had a solid career in college, but Oki, the same kind of guy from the Maryland area, he's played at Michigan. Uh, he's a guy that's going to transfer to, where is he, Charlotte this year. A guy that could win his speed and burst was so superior, even though he lacked some of the strength. He could, he could wreak havoc in the backfield just because his get off quickness off the ball speed or his burst uh, instincts to you know to make tackles was so superior at the high school level but some of the power size you know speed to power strength kind of was you know ability to get off blocks those traits were kind of lacking a little bit another guy that reminds me of this is Xavier Thomas out of Clemson so that scares me a little bit and that scares me about uh, Womack that that he could not that's that if he does not reach his full potential of living up to that five-star billing, I think it's a lot of that is in play. I think that's the problem with recruiting. They, you know, they can't identify, they can't identify, they can identify high-end level traits, but a lot of times anyone can high, identify high-level traits, but sometimes it's, it's, uh, you know, looking at some of the traits he's missing that could really cause him to, to not succeed at the next level. And I think that's why the where the five you know guys get uh, five stars wrong. They miss some of the key traits that the guy has that are not that are just really sometimes just adequate. Because that's the thing if you, if you look at a guy, <clears throat> let's say you take a guy. Okay, let's use Jalen Ramsey for example. If you look at Jalen Ramsey when he was in high school, this is a guy who that's and that's look at his traits. Let's say if this guy were to make it to the National Football League what how let's look at all his critical factors all his traits are they all at least good if you notice guys that make it to the nfl even if they're not actually not great in college they've all have at least solid to good traits in almost every area 
So if you look at it, like at Jalen Ramsey, the movements, size, size, very good, length, very good, burst, borderline elite, speed, very good, four four, low four fours, um, agility, you know, very good to elite, you know, there everything was almost, you know. Well, Jalen, Jalen Ramsey might not be the best example because almost everything in his game was uh, very good or elite. But you get my point, though. They There is no – everything is good. You know, if a guy's coming out of high school, like say you got a running back, if his just – I don't even know. Say he's got – if his long speed is just, like, adequate or say his burst is just adequate, but, he, you know, he's powerful – uh, he's got good vision, side to side movement. That's probably going to hold him back from being s successful when he gets to the NFL. You know, he might get by, he might be productive in college in the right offense with a good offensive line, but that's going to hold him back from from seeing success in the NFL most likely. But yeah, I kind of went on a tangent there. Um, but yeah, LSU. Um, yeah, the defense defensive line is is going to be fascinating uh, to watch. Um, you know, Mason Smith, everyone asks about Mason Smith. Um, you know, it's, it's just, it's a, exciting to get to see him because we haven't, we haven't got to see him play, uh, in a while now. Malik Neighbors. So I'll talk the wide receiver core. Malik Neighbors, uh, is going to be the go-to guy uh, at wide receiver. Malik Neighbors is excellent after the catch. I think that, you know, I think he's way too low on consensus receiver rankings. It looked like pro football focus was giving him a little bit of love, but, uh, yeah, Neighbors has got it all. Hands competitiveness competitive toughness um run after the catch ability can make plays on the sideline uh can put it yeah put his body into to awkward positions to get his toes in bounds on the sideline um, showed up in big games uh, really went off against purdue i mean malik neighbors has got it all i mean guy that can play on the outside and the slot can beat man coverage uh not only from just average corners but from from top corners like um from top corners like um, what's the Alabama Kool-Aid McKinstry so yeah I think that and then Aaron Anderson uh the transfer from Alabama obviously the guys that transfer from Alabama there must be something about him uh that, that's pretty good because Nick Saban only recruits guys uh that could most of um, well I say 95 over 95 percent of the time Nick Saban recruits guys that can play at Alabama so if this guy was good enough to get, receive an offer from Nick Saban and play at Alabama he must be good enough to get on the field at LSU. So keep Aaron Anderson uh, in mind. Uh, Chris Hilton Jr., um, Kyron Lacey. Kyron Lacey, one of the, the top votes for breakout candidates, not only for the LSU fans, but among uh, you know the coaching staff. Brian Kelly's even mentioned Kyron Lacey. So keep Kyron Lacey in, in mind. He's number two for LSU. So yeah, the wide receiving core. Uh, and then some of the young guys, uh, Shelton Sampson Jr. is a guy I like, uh, Jalen, I believe Jalen Brown too. So yeah, hopefully they fill out some depth uh, at wide receiver. But uh, yeah, you got it's 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 been fun. The transfer portal is kind of, I think it's made college football pretty fun. LSU finished with the number one transfer portal rank. Uh, they're on pace to bring in maybe bring in a top five recruiting class next year for 2024. So yeah, I mean a lot of exciting things uh, for LSU.